All right, folks. So um, here we are. I'm bringing you a different video today. It's going to be a tutorial on how to use Giants in Blender. Um, it's assuming that you have a decent understanding of both um, editing software. What you need to know with uh, Giants is how to export into a wave object and for Blender how to import and how to use um, the basic controls. It's not it's not a beginner's guide to using either either either, uh, either programs. It's assuming you have a basic understanding of how to navigate um, and a tutorial on how to export an object, import it into Blender, import it with textures, and how to deselect components or separate uh, components from a solid model. So, with the model we're using today is um, my beet harvester that I went ahead and I expanded. Um, the wings made them foldable, um, basically imported the body um, into uh, Blender and deselected components and uh, did that. So, uh, before we begin, I want to make sure you guys understand that these two um, I believe when you first install it that this checkbox is actually checked and make sure that is unchecked because when you import it into Blender it will be invisible and make sure you change the scale to 1 and then click apply and then OK. So after your, now your Blender is set up to export. I'm just going to have some coffee here. Um, so select the, 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 the object in your uh, scene, graph, um, scene graph and of what you want to export. So I'm going to export the body because I want the, the, the lifter portion. Um, export selection. We're going to export it to my desktop. You can export it wherever you want. Um, we'll just call it like body. Um, export that. Um, I'm recording so some of the stuff might be a little laggy. Um, it usually isn't for whatever reason it is now. Alright, so we're done with we're done with um, Giants editor for now. So you, then you just open up your Blender. This happens to be Blender 2.72. I try to use the latest um, software. The cube selected. I'm just going to delete the, the cube because we don't really need it. You could just do it by select delete. Um, then we're going to go and import our wavefront object from our desktop. There it is. <sighs> Alright. So then you saw that there was a few things that were a part of that, that nodes group, uh, like attacher hydraulic decals. Um, so hold hold your shift key and select all three, and then come back out here and just delete, because you don't need them. All right, so now we have the model, but it has no textures. So what you do with it selected, come up here, go down here, right click, split area. Um, I always change this to texture. So you can see that there, there's no textures on this model whatsoever. I come here and I change this window to UV image editor. Uh, I'm going to open um, an image instead of creating one. Like if you if it didn't have an existing um, uh, diffuse map, you would have to make one by doing like an AO texture or what have you. That is, there's that's a totally different video. There's a lot of them out there. So what you see what I just did is I imported an image and there it is it shows up because for example if I were to select this and go to UV and unwrap I would completely lose everything with this this if I were to do that then this image that I just uploaded into the software would not apply to this model anymore so make sure you do not unwrap okay now, it, in Blender, it looks like it's completely um, textured, but when you go to export, it will be untextured. The reason is, select it again by pressing A, 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 you know, A will select everything for you. Um, you need to make sure that you apply a material. We're just going to be this some random material. It doesn't really matter what it is because we already have, and then we're going to come here and we're going to apply a texture. That texture is um, the same diffuse map. This way, when it 
when Blender exports the model out into an i3D uh, format, it will keep the textures. So you need to make a material, and you need to make sure that the, in the texture tab, that you come down here to map, and you select your UV map. So, just to prove my point, when you come up here to the uh, i3D and then press N to get your, your tab, and we, uh, first of all, you must save. So we'll save it as, I already have like, we'll save it as that, collision, coal, or whatever it was. And do export selection. And I'll open up my documents and it, because uh, um, that's where it's saving it, and now, now you, you see it's uploaded. I come to my, my collision tab, and there it is. I have successfully imported the model into Blender and exported it with texture files. Delete the lamp, put in a light, and then there you go. You see that it has been successfully exported with the texture. Alright. So it's important, although it looked like when we first added our image that it was textured, when you exported it, it was exporting without a material. So you needed to make a material, doesn't matter what it is, just make sure when you make a material, you come to the texture tab and you upload your diffuse image again and you assign the UV map. The UV map is this image we uploaded here, UV map. If this was named something different, you would have to find it there, but since it's the only thing we're working with, it's totally fine. Now, I don't really care about that anymore. Now we get down to the business. What I like to do is... Um, I usually come and I select the edge, this edge button here. I make everything invisible so I can see through it. And then a really good trick is press C on your keyboard. C, open this radius, and then left click. When you left click, it will select. And if you use your middle mouse, mouse button, it will deselect. And the nice thing is with everything invisible, or using that invisible box, it will allow you to um, um, get everything. So, for example, if you were to uncheck this, you wouldn't be able to see through the other side. So you would only be able to select two faces, and then when you go to delete it, you still have two other faces. So make sure that this button right here, um, limit selection to visible, make sure you uncheck that. So then you get all sides, and then just come down here, um, and uh, the, don't use the face tool, use the um, the uh, select edge because it's a lot easier to gather and then press escape to get out of that function and then you see like I kinda selected some of this stuff I'll just do C again, press C on your keyboard it'll bring up this uh, pretty cool little feature and just use your middle middle scroll button and deselect um, the stuff that you didn't want to delete. So I'll just go and kind of be careful here. So, um, select a little bit of this stuff. Make sure all this stuff is. I'm just deleting this because uh, it will be easier to work with once it's all gone. And then with edge selected, uh, I press escape again so I get my mouse back. Delete, edges, bam, it's all gone. Then get a, get a nice view again here. Uh, use my, my selection. Um, edges again allow me to uh, really get in there, get everything. Uh, <clears throat> Press escape. Just get uh, some some different angles here. Make sure you're getting everything you want to delete. Uh, really not that critical. Just make sure you don't delete anything that you want because you, you, you won't get it back. So like this, I'll just use my... mouse button. 
press escape. I will analyze the area, make sure I got everything I wanted. You could do a little bit at a time, or you could do a lot. It doesn't matter. I've, the, the nice thing um, is if... I'll just go ahead and delete this right now. Now, another key, um, little hotkey thing is if you go to like face tool and you press L and you scroll over the area, it will um, select like the groups in which it was made. So you can do that. I mean, that's that's another way. If you feel like the other way is just too too crazy for you, you just um, use this button and you will be able to. Um, um, select a bunch of stuff, but I I, I like this because I allow because you see I missed I missed a few things using the the L button, so I try not to use that. And what I do is uh, I'll just come up here, make everything invisible again. Um, and with the with the edge tool, it will only like select the edges that. Are um, basically where you, um, where you're working, so it won't select everything. Versus the the face tool, if there's a, this little center node, it will it will select that. So I just went ahead and selected these two uh, side panels. Looks like I got everything. Um, if you want to double check, you can just go up here and make sure uh, make everything solid again, not invisible. Um, and then with these two components selected, I will hit P. And what this does is it, I don't know why it's P, but it's how you separate with your item selected. And I will, um, th this is how I, can, I how, how I do it. You can, you can export, you can separate by material. You can, you know, whatever. I just find it easier to select what I'm, what I'm working on and separate it selection. So now you see what we did up here is these are now separate um, components. Now the key feature here is um, I'm actually going to go ahead and open this up again and I'm going to press C and I'm going to select this whole side and I'm going to press P again and select. So now I have two sides as you can see that's separate that oops See that? That's what happens when you. Uh, okay. I was gonna. Backtrack here a bit. Because I didn't have my invisibility thing. So, with these side panels selected, I'll go to, uh, I'll uncheck this again, put up my C, and select everything this time. And then P, and separate selection. Alright. So, now that should be good. That. Oh, no, these look dead. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. Now, this is no longer the same thing. So you have to come up here and you have to set um, your your cursor. So I always do it to center of mass. Come up here, set my origin again, uh, center of mass. Come up here again and set my origin to center of mass. What that does is that puts your cursor right in the middle of the object. Otherwise, it would be like way over here, or way over here, and it will just make it a lot easier to um, to handle um, in, in 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 giants. So we're done with that side. We're done with that side. Now um, we really don't need these PTO, these center PTOs. So what I'll do is um, I will come back in here. Oops, forgot forgot some of this stuff.
with my edge tool selected um, I'm just gonna delete that make you know that was a rookie mistake on my half you shouldn't ever leave any kind of components like that so what are we gonna do we're gonna delete um, first of all we'll go to our face tool and see what we can select sometimes if it's a really well designed model you'll be able to see like that PTO I select that whole, whole in, in, that entire PTO using the L button. So that saved me a fair amount of time using my other button. So I'm just trying to like knock out as much as I can with the L button. Um, just to give you guys a different little, um, uh, some different tools to use uh, as you're as you're kind of like playing around with this. Uh, press L there. Press L there. Um, well, press L there, L, 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 L. Um, what else we got here? L, 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 L. And it's kind of like a more um, cautious way of selecting. It's a little bit slower, but it's you have a little bit more control. Um, it allows you to um, get a lot of bulk out of the way if it's a well-designed model. So I'll just come up here and do L. Now, we're in a pretty good view with our camera now. That I can go back to my edge tool, I can make this invisible, I can go to C, and then you can see a lot of the stuff I missed that it's selecting. So you can see as it's starting to pick up a lot more. I'll come down here and uh, press, press uh, escape again get a different view, see if we missed anything. Seems like we um, did pretty good. We got our PTO. We don't really need... So I'm using my shift shift button and my alt button and uh, I'm going to come back to face and uh, use my L buttons again try to get as much as I can and then uh, don't really need these I'll use my C my C button because I have a, I have a, can get everything without selecting anything else so if you if you can use because if you're using the C with invisible anything behind this like whatever it is it will select it um, not that big of a deal because you can just go ahead and deselect. So, but as you guys can see, it's why it was so important to apply the textures before you start doing this. Because now that it's they're separate components, you'd have to like make materials and like make the texture map and for all of these. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. It's just easier to apply the textures and then separate the components. Just a little um, little tip. Go ahead and delete those. So. You can see we have a little bit. Make sure it's invisible. This is why I like the edge, edge tool, because it allows me to really get in there and select stuff. a little bit tedious but um, if you're like me and you're really upset about some of the, the standard uh, equipment in game it uh, is well worth it what complete novice and really t uh, really bad modders will do is they'll just make they'll just go in giants and stretch the whole body because they don't know how to do this it's not that difficult that's why I'm making um, a video for you guys so you can do it on your own so you don't have to bug me all the time so invisible again we're gonna get this little sliver up here got it and we're gonna slide over here um, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select all of this because it's not needed. And if you if you select something you don't want, like you can see I selected this little fender thing over here, just use your middle mouse button and it's gone. No longer selected. Now I'll get like a, a under view, kind of narrow my selection a little bit. Select that, select those two little square things. Come back up here. Select that, that was left over. Alright, got that selected. Let's see. What would be a good angle? Be a little bit cautious over here. So you can look at your work, make sure everything is selected that you wanted to be selected. And uh, you can see I have these little cubes in here that I really don't want. Back up a little bit, select those. Now you see why it's so important to use this invisibility thing. Um, everything selected I wanted, and just go ahead and delete edges again. Missed a few spots here. Go back, turn on my invisibility, and just select these things again. No big deal. And uh, miss some more. Select that. And delete the edges. Now. Another little piece. So, oh yeah, I I absolutely cannot stand these. Uh, I'll just go ahead. I'll show you like what I usually do. I select, make sure I have my entire thing selected that I want. Then I'll come back up, do the same thing right here. Select that, and then just control middle button. Middle button, middle button, middle button. And just make sure that nothing that I want to keep is selected. The way you do that is get up and get real close. So what I'm removing is this um, odd European fender thing. I want to keep these actually, so I'll go back and deselect those. Use that. Now we'll come back over here and verify our work using our shift and alt keys. So I'll deselect that. Then I'll come back up here. Select these edges. Select, select, select. Avoid that. And I think I might have missed something over there, but what, what we did is now we're just removing our European panels. The edges.
And I think we're back in business. Um, go ahead and make this invisible. Or visible again. Uh, make our little deals. Um, and there you go. That is our new. Um, so hold your shift key, shift, 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 select all three. You can um, you can leave them as separate components, or you can um, come back up to your tool tool menu and select join, um, and reset your origin to center of mass. So what I did is I exported them individually. I uh, oh. Miss, uh, here's a good idea. We probably want to remove these brackets. So I'll turn this back on. Just use my C, 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 and just go across the centerpiece and uh, delete those images. Alright, so now we have do, uh, our side thing, side panel. The only reason why I separated the sides is because um, I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. A solid piece or, or, or whatever but the nice thing is since we already separated them as objects um, and we go back to face mode and we click L um, they, they should be um, already huh, all right, well, apparently not but what should happen what it used to happen in the old blender is if you were to separate um, components and then join them back together. They would, and you want to like select them again. It would be you would be able to like select this whole thing by just pressing L, but apparently not. So, with this selected, we'll go ahead and we'll save, and then we will uh, export selection, and then we'll come back up to um, documents. We'll look at our collision file again, and hopefully it's there. Ah, ta-da! There it is. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So there you guys go. Um, but we're not done. I will show you guys back in Blender. You see... Alright. Oh, and another thing is if you're in Blender and you don't want to make a, a separate transform uh, transform thing, you can, let's say we select right there, right, right at the top, like corner edge, maybe right down to the edge. You'll have to do this for, um, if you want two sides, you'll have to do this separate. What I did is I just exported it. I put, uh, I made a, a component for rotation. As you can see, I put the uh, transform right there and then I just like moved it down um, because when you open when you open this, it had, um, I, I still have these all as separate three components. Um, just because I wanted the option to keep it or remove it. But another, another thing is when you're setting your origin is you can set your cursor to be right there. So when you're flipping it, it like rotates right there. So what we'll do is um, we will we will set origin um, to 3D cursor. So you put your cursor right where you want it. So then we can put uh, this little um, flippy thing and all of a sudden now it rotates on that um, that axis. Then now what we'll do is um, export selection. Now we'll come back to our model that we have in Blender. Um, I'll just pretend that these aren't there. <sighs> and then we'll come to uh, import. We will um, find. Um, I have it in my documents. That's where everything is saved. And there it is. Press X, put it back in, put it like over here. And now you have this thing ready to go. And then if you were to uh, go back in your blender and like flip your cursor over, um, that way it would rotate there too. So we'll go ahead, we will uh, save 
That way it will update the, the, the XML file. We'll come here, um, open this up in Notepad and see how it is pulling from something else. Just go ahead. Um, it's using the same file. Just go ahead, delete that. Um, flip that around. And then we'll look for a texture file. First of all, we'll look for um, number seven. Where's number seven? There's number seven. Now the only downside to this method is the um, normal map does not work. That's why I have excluded the normal map. It turns black. You have to make a new normal map for the model. That's the only downside. So we'll look for file uh, 21. There it is. It should be at the very bottom of the last thing. And just go ahead, copy, paste. Looks like everything's good. So then we'll come back in and open it up. It should have our dirty texture. And there you go, folks. That's how you do it. Uh, and then you just go in and to your XML and you animate it. Or you can um, uh, just like make sure that this is uh, flat. Make it zero. Go to your info notes, cut or start with. And just, um, I, already, I already had that set. It, it was over here, but just like move out your cutting width. And there you go. Add another pipe. I added this pipe and it, it, it will um, fold it like this or something and then it folds down like that um, and then I put a uh, row crop. So um, I hope you guys appreciated this tutorial. Um, again, if I was going too fast, that's okay. It's recorded. You can pause it. You can rewind it. You can watch it ten more times. It doesn't really matter. Um, the key functions in Blender are using your C key on your keyboard, your shift and control, using your left mouse and your middle mouse button, and making sure that you import the first thing you do um, is you apply your textures um, and make sure when you when you uh, go to your, your uh, this tab, make sure you apply your UV map so it will export with the textures. So thanks for watching. Give me a like, subscribe, and tell me what else you want to know. Thanks.